Hello, I am Samson Ngumenawe, the Data Quality Coordinator at Humanitarian Open Street Map Team here at State of the Map 2022 to talk about our top 10 data quality aspects that we are focusing on at Port. I will talk about the background of how we did that, why we care about data quality, the data quality aspects that we care about, and the next steps on implementation. A bit of the background is that HOT works with a number of organizations and communities that contribute to OpenStreetMap, and they contribute this data through desktop digitization, data collection surveys, and local knowledge experiences. All these mechanisms of contribution create data quality issues in OpenStreetMap, and that's why we are prioritizing data quality at port. While defining these data quality issues, we talked with the data quality associates at the regional hubs, the OpenStreetMap trainers, representatives from the open mapping communities, and as well as partners like the Heidelberg Institute of Geoinformation Technology. We care about data quality because we want to satisfy the user expectations of accuracy, completeness, and consistency. However, we also want to know the causes of these data quality aspects and find ways of eliminating them by improving our contribution approaches. By doing that, we shall be also improving trust and usage of OpenStreetMap data. So here are our top 10 data quality aspects that have been categorized into three main categories that include positional accuracy, completeness, and semantic accuracy. Under positional accuracy, we have spatial offsets, mainly coming from the misalignment of the satellite images. We have feature tracing inconsistencies and logical inconsistencies. Under completeness, we have temporal inconsistencies, we have red road network uh, consistencies, we have completeness of health facilities, completeness of public service points, and administrative boundaries, where new administrative units are created, but they are never shown on the map. Whereas under semantic, we have tagging as the main uh, aspect of data quality and tasking manager project inconsistencies that result from uh, wrong instructions and delayed mapper feedback. Having known all this, what are we going to do? One, we want to develop data quality assessment framework whereby all the data coming into OpenStreetMap is subjected to data quality assessment before it is uploaded. We are also embarking on training the mapper communities that contribute and validate OpenStreetMap data. Also, we are asking the entire open mapping community to suggest for us the tools and workflows that can be incorporated to improve the quality of OpenStreetMap data. And once we have that, we shall collaborate with the partners and develop those tools. We deploy them to improve the quality of data from the biggest spatial database. Thank you so much. Enjoy the conference. Yes. Yes. Hello. Uh, greetings, everyone. Once again, welcome to the State of the Map 2022. I am Antidias, uh, Antidias Kawamala, all the way from Tanzania. All that I want to say is uh, thank you. Thank you for coming out and making time for this. So uh, let's dive in. All of these studies is uh, under Living Lab initiatives as an attempt 
uh, to transform my data as a reporting tool into a decision making tool. We are working collaboratively uh, with university students, the local people, and the local government, ensuring that uh, we make the free and editable uh, map of the world. There are so many philosophies, so do you, but we only stick to the three. Uh, working with the open source tools, using the local knowledge, as well as the whole process is inclusive. Uh, when we started our, our, our initiatives, uh, we thought of a thing that could be easily replicated to the other place. So we thought of working with the university students. As you can see, I am training them on using uh, tools like QGIS, Input, and ODK. So shout out to these uh, such in initiatives uh, making our life easier. We don't know where we could be without, without them. <laughs> I'm just joking. The local people with the local knowledge, these are like our north directions. They always give us the information we need uh, so as to make this free and editable map of the world. As a surveyor goes around and then he asks questions, and then he fills in the information. Then later on, we transform the information into data, of which the data is going to be used as the, the tool for uh, decision making. The whole process is inclusive. We are not trying to leave everybody uh, or anyone behind, but we are clearing them both together. Uh, both, uh, both together means the female and males. So as 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 defined, so we are we are trying to work collaboratively together with uh, with everybody in the community. So after having uh sitting with different meetings and the community meetings. Then what we come out with, uh, we come out with a uh, digitization process of what we have obtained from like from the sites or from the community, and then uh, the community tell us about the name of the roads, the the name of the of the restaurant, where could it be that they take away the uh, restaurant being called, and then we feed in the, the, the information using the open street map uh, unleashing tools like uh, Josim and ID editor. This is what you can see before and after having the initiatives. Before the initiatives, uh, the, the, the community or the place was dotted and mapped. So to date, we have so many numbers of ads done under the delegation. If you can have your map and then you can easily access the latitude and longitude placed uh, on this representation, then uh, you can have them at, at your time. Last but not least, we are we are translating all the information of the open street map into Swahili, which is the local language I use it here in Tanga. But always people use the, the other language like English as I do. <laughs> so we are like giving more giving them uh, like the, the the information which has been communicated. So we are glad if you follow us, if you like and then if you retweet our process in open street maps here. So uh, uh, without wasting much of your time, if you want to get in contact with me or maybe have some extended version of this conversation, then uh, you can reach me through uh, the Today I'm stood in front of the statue of Ram Mohan Roy a great 17th century philosopher and one of the founders of the Indian Renaissance. And I thought that would be a great segue into today's video about the Renaissance of open map data. Okay, let's do a little thought experiment. What I'd like you to do is picture every single person in the world across every country that could, emphasis on the could, benefit from the use of open map data. Okay, think about how vast that group is, how many people are in that group. Next, I'd like you to imagine all of the people in the world that currently do benefit from the use of open map data. Okay, think about that group. I think all of us that work in mapping can agree that the number of people in the could group is many, many, many times larger than the number of people in the do group. 
And in order to increase the number of people that are in the do group, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to improve the accessibility of open map data. And a big part of that is the tools that we use. Think about regular open data. It's usually tabular data or a spreadsheet. Everybody who uses a computer knows how to open that. They know how to open that in Excel or Google Docs. The same can't be said for geospatial data. 99.9% .9 of people in the world have no idea how to open a shapefile or how to open a geo package. In order to improve the number of people in the do camp, what we're going to have to do is improve our tooling so everybody in the world knows how to access open map data. If you would like to be part of the open map renaissance, then come join us at MapStack, where our plan is to put every single piece of open map data in the world online as interactive maps, free for everybody forever. Hi, I'm Clay Smalley. I'm on the maintainer team of OpenStreetMap Americana. I live in Raleigh, North Carolina, that's on the east coast of the United States, and I'd like to show you our progress on implementing route shields from around the world. So OpenStreetMap Americana is an alpha stage OpenStreetMap renderer inspired by North American paper maps and road atlases, and it's intended to promote collaboration within the OpenStreetMap community of the United States. And a lot of important features are still missing, like points of interest, land use, so it's very much a work in progress, but one of the features we've been working on extensively is route shields. And what do I mean by route shields? So in North American English, at least, a shield means a navigation sign that identifies a highway route and what network the route belongs to. So on the left, we have an example of four numbered routes following a highway I regularly drive on to go visit my family. And on the right, here's some that are more local to Italy. And why are we doing this in the first place? In a lot of countries, the route number alone isn't enough to identify a route. In these examples from Venezuela, the United States, and Taiwan, there are routes that have the same number but different shield appearance. For renderers that display generic shields, we have to rely on workarounds that often involve prefixes that aren't actually on the signs. So using tags from relations instead of ways enables us to choose a shield icon to display instead of a generic rectangle. No workaround needed. So how are we doing this in Americana? We have an ever-growing library of SVG icons, thousands of lines of JavaScript mapping OSM tags to the icons, and the example on top is for Ohio State routes. We pick two background images with different widths and draw the ref on top based on how many characters are in it. The last two lines of the, ex the example add banner text above shield icons, a solution to a uniquely American problem where old alignments of numbered routes often retain the same number and shield appearance, but have some extra text posted above them. And for certain simple shapes like rectangles and ovals, no shield icon is necessary. It's drawn directly with JavaScript canvas code. In the future, we hope to separate the shield generation code to facilitate reuse by other projects and also implement shields for other kinds of routes like hiking, cycling, and public transit routes. Right now, shields are only supported in the countries highlighted in purple, and most of these countries only have partial support. Some countries only have shields for national routes and they're missing shields on a more local level. But we've been having contributions from people all over the world interested in implementing shields for their home countries, and we're always happy for more. If you want to check out for yourself, the first link leads to a demonstration of the map renderer, and the following links lead to our GitHub. You can track our progress on shield internationalization in the last link, and if I'm going too fast, don't worry, you can find a link to the GitHub from the demo and vice versa. And if you're interested in helping add your country's route shields, the first thing to do is add road routes to relations if they're not already mapped. And once you talk among your local community and come to a consensus around a tagging scheme, tell us about it by creating an issue in our repository. Or if you're technically inclined, go ahead and submit a pull request. Bonus points if you can show us how the shields look in real life, or if you have a print map that shows shields. And thank you to the organizing committee for putting this on, and thank you to the OpenStreetMap community for producing such a good collaborative geographical database. Enjoy the rest of the conference. Hello, and uh, welcome to my presentation, uh, the Lightning Talk. My name is Enoch, and uh, I just want to tell you quickly about, um, about a good open street map, uh, what, and uh, how do we or you map contribute to open street map. 
yeah, OpenStreetMap, as we all know, is uh, very forgiving. It's uh, do it ourselves. Uh, we try to fix things ourselves, and then also we map and fix what uh, we contribute. Uh, because OpenStreetMap is diverse, uh, global, and welcoming, of course, and also very, very forgiving in that sense. Uh, this results into so many issues, uh, many issues uh, that uh, most of them, uh, I believe, uh, could be avoided or shouldn't even become uh, an issue uh, in the first place. So uh, quickly, this talk is uh, motivated by some of these uh, spaghetti roads uh, in Ghana, especially uh, the focus here on this presentation is based on my um, observations, uh, which uh, this presentation seems to be like a tip of uh, these observations. Maybe we can have a talk about this in another session or Sometime next year, I come back uh, with uh, a whole session about uh, these observations and how some of them were addressed. But uh, without further ado, um, why do you map or why do we map? Uh, we have so many reasons. Uh, OpenStreetMap in its uh, uh, natural state or basis for already a humanitarian project. Uh, so we have so many reasons. Some of us, because OpenStreetMap is the go to source, or there is uh, no data source for something we need, or we want to uh, help make the world a better place uh, through. Uh, open and accessible geographic uh, information. So, and uh, we are mapping so many stuff. Uh, some of us love to map buildings, 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 uh, schools, banks. I am personally a fan of uh, service stations because I'm traveling mostly along uh, by road, um, Ghana and West Africa. And uh, these are very uh, fancy features. So service station, four stations along uh, many roads. The world is uh, really changing very fast. Uh, and uh, in Africa, Ghana, uh, and uh, other African countries, Ghana especially, of course, uh, things are changing very fast, not only in Ghana, but others, uh, forgive me. A lot of things are changing, of course, uh, changing very fast. And uh, not everywhere that uh, is uh, changing fast as well, of course. Bing is not changing very fast. Uh, it's one image which is very, very super old uh, in most uh, parts of our world where uh, things are changing very fast, uh, but uh, in Bing, it's not uh, changing that much. So you can see the differences here in Maxa compared to uh, Bing here. That tells you that uh, there is a lot that is on the ground now that is uh, uh, not in this map, and there is a lot that uh, is on the ground now that should not be mapped, and uh, vice versa. Uh, brings me now to OpenStreetMap Fantasy. Uh, yeah, we map for so many reasons, and we are mapping so many stuff. Uh, this uh, in the beginning, I mentioned that because OpenStreetMap is diverse, open, and welcoming, and very forgiving, we can uh, come to a uh, fantasy. This is uh, one example of uh, OpenStreetMap fantasy I've uh, come across in Ghana, where you can see this uh, primary road uh, across the residential roads. Where do they come from, and uh, how did they get here? Uh, yeah, novices or new uh, contributors uh, make mistakes. And uh, some of them have learned uh, through engagement, through uh, messages or discussions, which uh, have helped as well. Uh, brings me now to uh, OSM messages, uh, which is uh, something uh, interesting that uh, I, in the beginning, when I found OpenStreetMap uh, messaging feature, this was one feature that I used to reach out to uh, uh, contributors in Ghana, contributors that I've seen have made changes in Ghana that uh, look very local because there are certain things that you can map only in, uh, if you have been to a certain locations, uh, which uh, was uh, probably the beginning of uh, bringing together a group of people to have a uh, open street map many lists uh, for Ghana and a beginning community or so. Uh, some people sit far away and think uh, this is how uh, something should be. Uh, this is a subject of uh, residential roads mapping by one user across Ghana, which is connecting to several stars. Uh, it was a very long one, and you can see it's two or three tracks, and in the end, uh, this user uh, have responded and uh, glad that he or she could stop uh, mapping uh, random uh, residential land use connecting to roads and many other features. So. Also, uh, this brings me to uh, maybe the last uh, but not the least, that uh, Sometimes some things are changing from afar as well. Yeah, locals also make changes, and also people from afar make changes. And this have to uh, resolve to um, other means of uh, saying stop mapping this uh, according to how you prefer. In Ghana, there is only one motorway. And this motorway, uh, I feel, uh, have suffered a lot uh, 
from uh, several uh, companies and uh, individuals who think that this road should not be a motorway. Uh, motorway uh, description in OSM or according to uh, the tagging uh, should be having uh, clear that this road in Ghana has a speed limit of 100 kilometers per hour. There's no other road in Ghana with uh, this speed limit. And for that matter, um, uh, all I have to say in, in the change set, the recent one to change that comment is that uh, I'd be very uh, direct to the point and say, please stop changing this. So next time you, you see this and try to stop changing it. But I hope uh, it doesn't suffer against somebody changing it. Um, this uh, five minutes cannot say all, but uh, this to just summarize and tell you that uh, there are so many things happen. Uh, both good and bad uh, for the open street map project um, when uh, we complain or we talk about uh, things happening in open street map, it's not that uh, the project uh, we don't love the project and uh, we are also open and everyone should also be open for um, suggestions uh, advice and then also guidance on uh, things that are going not uh, the right way uh, use good change set comments uh, this is a very big issue um, uh, that uh, we we still trying to find a way around. Good change set comment is uh, very important. The motorway staff, the one who changed recently, just said line correction. The line was not corrected. It was just the tag that was changed uh, from motorway to something else. And then, uh, yeah, you can see from just two images uh, from my uh, slide uh, previous, you can see uh, Max have been, things have changed and things are changing uh, uh, very exponential, but not every image. So avoid uh, tracing. A lot of buildings are with this typo. Yeah, from a very, very old images. Reply to all same change set discussion because it helps. I had to revert this uh, motorway uh, because uh, the user, which only recently didn't respond to my uh, friendly and kind uh, change set uh, uh, comment, uh, discussion that uh, why did he or she change this? Uh, yeah, go out there, maps, you can go maps. Works fine, but when you go out, you also have fun. And, uh, for one note, uh, OSM is the only data source uh, for some of us in Ghana. I can say um, there is no other data source where I can get uh, um, this data that OpenStreetMap provides. Same as uh, other places across uh, at as well. And also, if your company is mapping or you're mapping in Ghana or in a country, engage with locals through the appropriate channel so that uh, there is history and then uh, we can come back to it as well. And we keep learning. Uh, so uh, we all make mistakes and then these mistakes can be avoided. Uh, uh, in the early stages, uh, so that they don't become very complex one and difficult to fix. Uh, nothing is impossible, but it's better to avoid them. Thank you very much, and uh, enjoy the state of the map, and see you soon. Hi, welcome to my quick presentation about uh, ONG Live. So, uh, to be quick, uh, what is OSG Live? Um, OSG Live is uh, an operating system. So, as it reads on um, the OSG uh, Live uh, website, it says um, it's uh, a self contained um, bootable DVD, USB, and uh, based on Ubuntu with uh, free software mostly for um, geospatial package to, for your needs. So, it comes in um, two forms. It's either, um, a DVD, uh, an ISO image that you can put on a USB stick and start your computer from it, or a VMDK, which is a virtual box image that you can put in a virtual box uh, and then uh, run the software. But when we say an operating system, what does it mean? Does it mean that you can run this on your existing uh, system? Maybe you are using Ubuntu now and you say, okay, uh, OS your life can I run? No, you can run OS your life uh, on your existing operating system uh, as indirectly. So um, uh, like you just pick up Firefox and install on your Linux machine or your Windows or Mac machine. You cannot do the same. In order to do same, that is where you need a, a, a virtual box. So over here we have a guide for how to run uh, uh, OSU Live in a virtual box. So this allows you uh, to use the um, mix of virtualization to run um, OSU Live in an existing operating system. So as you can see here, the guy demonstrates how to create a, a, a virtual machine in your current operating system and run uh, OS Your Life uh, in it. OS Your Life is uh, an OS Your project, uh, so the Open Source Geospatial Foundation uh, project uh, promotes um, free software for geospatial, it's a not for profit and global and uh, a voluntary uh, community as well. Now we can quickly look at uh, what is the content of this uh, OS Your Life. Or this operating system. 
Originalized concrete um, tank of um, software, which is the OHG project, the community project, and also um, because it comes in two versions, that's a DVD and a virtual box disk, uh, we want to keep the size of the ISO, which we use for uh, creating the virtual box uh, for installation and also live booting of uh, this operating system very uh, minimal and that's because a lot of things are already going. So the VMDK, which you can run on an existing computer, is uh, much uh, larger and some uh, applications or projects are removed from it to make it lightweight. So you can see desktop, we have a big category from desktop down to uh, uh, available um, geospatial standards and also uh, many more data here will be of interest uh, because uh, OpenStreetMap falls in uh, this category. So when OSGO Live is released, uh, it's annually and uh, comes up uh, just a few weeks uh, before uh, force 4 g which is the annual free and open source software for geospatial conflict. And luckily this year is happening in the same venue as a state of the map and inference. That is how can you see um, the name of on the image uh, which you saw on the first page. As uh, also, you can see that um, um, OpenStreetMap data is included. So OpenStreetMap data is included for the city in which Force4G is happening. Uh, when we look at uh, contents again, you can see some um, other software such as uh, uh, QGIS and uh, GRAS and many more are included already, meaning that you don't have to install. Uh, it's uh, interesting to know that. Uh, we always want to use uh, some software in the geospatial sphere, but uh, it's not easy always uh, installing this or some of these already doesn't run on uh, an existing operating system like Windows. So, but uh, it comes uh, pre-packaged here, you don't have to struggle with the installation because the um, team have taken care of this and done this for you. So you can test without installing, that is the beauty of uh, OSG Live. Uh, we have a, a link for the project and then a quick start. So quick start gives you a quick overview, a quick training uh, about uh, this uh, tool. And uh, on this operating system, there is a test or sample data that helps you to uh, do this kind of stuff without needing to download. So this fits in environment where there is uh, less connectivity, so offline environment, and then you can easily um, run trainings and workshops uh, with uh, OS your life without uh, modifying what is on the user system. If you want to get OS your life, I mentioned earlier that it's in two forms. We have a, a virtual box image, which is called EMDK, and then you have uh, uh, the ISO file. So you can see the ISO file here is 4K, and then um, the virtual box image is a compressed uh, file. It's larger than this. So after you decompress it, you don't need much system resources in order to use uh, OS your life. And uh, when you see metrics, uh, you see some uh, information about uh, software and tools that is already included here. Uh, of course, um, GOSM, uh, your lovely tool is included here. So if you need to run training with uh, um, offline or in places where internet is less and also trying to remove things from uh, users' computers, you can have an OSG Live USB stick and then users can start their computer from this instead of uh, booting into the existing uh, operating system. There's also uh, Postgres and other tools, uh, a lot of them, many more than five minutes can't cover. And uh, we can uh, look at also uh, um, the how to get involved if you need some more information. You want to uh, add a project or yeah, there's a, a process for getting project and reviewing and getting more uh, out of uh, OSG Live. There is a mailing list if you need help, just write. There is a, an IRC channel uh, uh, for OSG Live that you can connect to and ask questions and also follow us uh, on uh, Twitter. Last but not the least, um, you can see there is a uh, language is available. So if the project is not in a language, you can also contribute by uh, uh, translating. Or if you see your language is not here, you can also contribute by translating. Um, yeah, some of you might be attending Force4G or also uh, a state of the map. Uh, you can uh, yeah catch me and uh, for more information about this and also have some uh, uh, OSG Live USB sticks that uh, can be uh, uh, used uh, in your home countries or wherever. And I can uh, always uh, we are happy to hand over them. So. Visit uh, for OS your booth and also uh, enjoy uh, state of the map and see you soon. Bye.
Good day, everyone. I am Nishal Ronik Arcadis, and I'm one of the information officers of the OST's Advanced Science and Technology Institute. So today, I'm going to talk about the DATOS project. So the DATOS project, or the Remote Sensing and Data Science DATOS Help Desk, specializes in processing satellite images and Earth observation data to produce on-demand maps for our stakeholders. One of the project's highlights was the use of artificial intelligence and also machine learning in our remote sensing workflows for us to expedite and um, automate the production of maps for us to bring support and manage requests from clients during, after, and even before disaster events like typhoons and earthquakes. So the DATOS project has ended and it is now a service under the OSTS. And speaking of the OSTST, this is how the data flows using the agency's available infrastructure. Without this, DATOS won't be operationalized. So from PREGINET, where we get the internet connectivity, to PEDRO, where we get the satellite images, and to CORE, where we use their supercomputers and HPC or Science Cloud, up to the DATOS project for processing and distribution of maps or the AI for Earth observation itself. Hence, the challenge that the AI for mapping technology or the DATOS project seeks to address is this, the rapid map generation for DRR and emergency response. So releasing of maps was too long before, but now as long as we have the available data or satellite captures, we are now able to release maps to stakeholders and affected communities. So if you receive barrage of emails from DATOS project during weather events, it's our way of telling you that, hey, we have the data, please use and disseminate as you see fit. The manual processing of the available Earth observation data sets nationwide requires time, money, and very high technical expertise. So our solution is artificial intelligence. To be able to do this, specific expertise is needed. So currently, this is our team composition. We have programmers for artificial intelligence, we have remote sensing experts for image interpretation. We have GIS experts for mapping. And we also have admin and communication people for IECs and marketing. We do this because we believe that our diverse expertise would mean a more seamless information distribution from technical to technology proliferation. So these are the DATOS products. So what are the applications of the DATOS project? So number one is the disaster risk management. The continuous disaster activity of DATOS is the provision of flood extent maps as well as the assessment of flood damages. The flood situation maps generated every after extreme weather events are sent to NDRRMC, to OCD, to DOST, US to regional offices, as well as affected LGUs to aid in their damage assessment efforts. Such datasets are also posted on the DATOS Facebook page for public consumption. And here, we can also assess forest fire damage uh, using satellite images and the same process that we are using in the DATOS project. We can also assess earthquake damages. So identifying the extent of landslide through advanced image processing techniques immediately after the event can potentially aid in the rapid damage assessment and response operation of the RRM actors on the ground. So this image was shared with the FIVOX and the Cotabato LGU during the earthquake-induced landslides in Makilala, Cotabato in 2019. Also, part of DATOS efforts is the rapid provision of data on the ground. The respondents on the ground used the map with updated landslide delineation from DATOS project and they were still able to save six people out of the rubble. So where is DATOS? Right now, it is a service under the OSTST, and the personnel are still working with the agency, but under a different project. We still work for the continuous marketing and partnership activities of DATOS. DATOS is now contemplated to transfer to FILSA, given that FILSA will institutionalize DATOS and its tests. Here's our contact details, just in case you want to know more about us. So thank you and have a good day.
Hi, I'm Pavel. Together with Contour Team, we've developed an open source disaster ninja, a tool that helps the humanitarian OpenStreetMap team to search for unmapped areas when a disaster strikes. But sometimes catastrophic consequences may be avoided if you keep map up to date and put roads and houses in advance. This is what I'm sure all the participants of the state of the map are doing. Most Disaster Ninjas functionality is available for all OSN enthusiasts completely free. Today I'll tell you about the key layers that help to estimate the coverage of OpenStreetMap data and start drawing the map immediately from its interface. On this slide we can see that Florence is quite well mapped. This bivariate layer shows the ratio of the number of objects in the OSN to the population density. But in many places around the world the picture is quite different. For example, this is how the state of the map for Haiti and Dominican Republic looks like. 22 million people live on the island that is exposed to destructive natural phenomena almost every year. At the same time, for 36% of its populated territory, not a single object has been mapped in opposite map. Using the OSM building quantity layer, we can estimate how well specifically houses are mapped. According to contour estimates, 66% of populated areas have zero buildings mapped in OpenStreetMap. We can also explore the completeness of the road network coverage in OSM. We estimated road completeness by comparing OpenStreetMap data with Facebook's global AI detected road network datasets. And we used statistical regression from our control population dataset where Facebook's AI data is missing. You can zoom in to the red areas that are worst mapped and click the Edit in Opposite Map button to go directly to the editor. I believe everybody is familiar with ID editor on this slide. Disaster Ninja allows you to estimate the state of the map with not only amount of data, but its quality. Often the map is drawn sufficient, in sufficient details, but data may be outdated. This is what Italy looks like, for example. Many places that are frequently viewed in OSM were last updated several years ago. The Coliseum is still standing, but it may be worth checking if its opening hours are correct in opposite map. To estimate the ratio of OSM objects against population, we've created and constantly improving an open global population dataset, counter population. You can download the global and per country versions on humanitarian data exchange portal. But you can also help us to improve it, because since the latest version we use the population totals from OSM to improve data. We do so only in the regions where extra data is needed and if OSM data is available and consistent. Using maps is not always the best way to find data inconsistencies, such as between population totals in opposite map, control population and wiki data. Sometimes it's better to use regular tabular reports, and we have five of them for now. But this time, let's take a look on just two of them. Population tag check report, where we analyze how well this tag is in opposite map. You can check how all data are and define the regions which need improvements. On top of the list, you may see countries with biggest difference between OSN data and counter population dataset estimations. You can also use Wikidata for extra checks. And you also can use search bar to find certain areas of your interest. When you have population added, a new issue may appear. is the regional inconsistencies. Population for country may be higher or lower than the sum of its subregions. That's why you have population inconsistencies report. There you can check if numbers match between administrative levels. We will be glad to have your feedback uh, for these reports. Please check it and you can leave your comments right through the intercom on our website. Thank you for your attention.
Nandiraj Saranya. I am really proud to make this presentation as a third year student at Eastern University, Sri Lanka. Let me give an introduction about my topic. Today, I am going to talk about women participation in OSM. I have divided my presentations into four sections or parts. My dears, in this model, we will study introductions of women participation in OSM, then impact area and project idea and goals, female participation on OSM. Lastly, how to improve activities. First of all, we'll study introductions part. I rise up my voice, not so I can shout, but so that those without a voice can be heard. We cannot succeed when half of us are held back by Malala Yusa right? and the, by Oman for Oman. Mapping in support of women and girls is exactly the same as mapping in general with an important difference. The mapper keeps in mind that man issues us this broken, this affects women and girls and even a few issues are relevant to women and girls only. For example, see leads and see inspire, a program that will engage Hundred women between December 2021 and June 22. Miss Mapco uh, is designed to bridge the gap between female mappers or contributors and the OSM community. On this view, now we will see how the women participation impact on the society field has public health women and girls have specific health needs including but not limited to reproductive health services at the same time many women face financial and physical barriers to assessing appropriate health care mapping these services can help raise their profile and make it easier for women and girls to access critical health care. Second one, gender equality, democratization adoptions of good inclusive policies toward eliminatory social inclusive policies toward eliminatory social inequalities and promoting sustainable development in the framework of gender equality. It provides your evidence-based policy recommendations aim to strengthen women's participation in economic, social, and political life. Generating data-driven policy suggestions to increase women's participation in economic life. Monitoring and evaluating the effects of public policies regarding women's participation in economic, political, and social life. Developing data-based social gender policies and advocacy tools, but publishing and spreading of new decisions in the field of gender studies. Monitoring national and international gender policy initiatives while generating relevant policy recommendations. Third one, safety and security. Estimate that 35% of women worldwide have experienced either physical or sexual intimate partner violence or sexual violence by a non-partner at same point in their life. However, same national studies show that up to 70% of women have experienced physical and or sexual violence from in intimate partner in their lifetime. Women and girls' safety in public spaces include street lamps and emergency services such as police and emergency phones. And last one, sustainable cities and communities. Identify obstacles to women's participation in economic, social, and political life in the city they live in and into the proposed policy 
to overcome the barriers and make the cities more participatory and ultimately more sustainable. Next part, how do women's participation help on project idea? First one, capacity building of female members in region of society. For example, 2021, I ranked in Sri Lanka first places on OSM country growth. Second one, encourage and empower female members into becoming OSM leader or trainers. And finally, increase female friendly in OSM and create female friendly OSM map and community. Now I think how to improve women's participation activities, not alive. First activity, provide a two days residential training to around 10 minutes female members. Second activity, collect the ad female friendly and mark safe spaces for female on the OSM map in their representative local administrative unit. Third one activity, organize three, four females only led OSM training sessions in different universities. I hope you have enjoyed my talk. You are welcome with your questions. Good luck. Thank you for wonderful opportunity. Hello everyone, I'm Rajendra Kipuna studying Geography as Special in Eastern University of Sri Lanka. Today, my presentation will be about OpenStreetMap in Geographical Information Science. Technological advances in the last five years have led to initiatives that aim to build collaborative, community-led, alternative of commitment mapping plans. Here, the model is to make and share our own mapping rather than simply adding data to a map that everyone needs. OpenStreetMap formed in July 2003. It is currently transforming itself into an international non-profit organization dedicated to encouraging the growth, development, and distribution of free geographical data and to providing geospectral data for anyone to use and share. OSM actually seeks free alternative map subjects to use on the Creative Commons contribute share. A library this allows use to share, copy, transmit, or adapt their work subject to the contents that must Alternate the material and must in turn distribute any product based on price under the same term as the original releases. The mapping is solved in a wiki environment where any user is able to input new material and modify the data of others. At the same time, recent years see new ways of collecting geographical information via the cloud rather than organization. OSM is a prime example of the approach and has bought free access to a wealth of geographical information for many parts of the world. The increasing availability of every rich data set of freely available geographical information leads to strong interest of researchers and participations in the ability of this data for its limitations and potentials. Traditionally, government agencies, cartographical centers, and commercial agencies were the only source for end users seeking spectral data. One of the most reliable barriers to move with free access to these geo data was created by OSM provide high speed and legal changes in combination with the time 
and purpose limited copyright instruction instance. Changes in information and communication technology brought about by the internet and social media and the vulnerability of inexpensive portable satellite navigation devices has seen this traditional geodata model changed. In general, OISO aims at building and maintaining a fully editable map database of the world in a collaborative map so that people and end users are not focused to buy geodata in the traditional way and subsequently by subject to real and civil copyright and legal commitments. We started internally with a focus on mapping streets and roads. Since then, it has moved to behind these entires and it now contains a very, very rich variety of geographical objects. For example, buildings, land use, points of interest from all over the planet being mapped by thousands of volunteer contributors to the project. Besides, from the absolute commercial benefit offered by OISO, the project has revolutionized the way in which geodata is collected. The collection of geodata and the development of cartographical projects limits to scientific, geographic service, or cartography. As it is built on many of the same ICT structures, as Wikipedia, it offers its project contributes the possibility of almost imitating, updating, or proposed editing software and other tools. Importing geodata from a global position system as novel devices smartphones, and other digital map tools, and access to the true history of mapping activities in only the its lifetime. And finally, collaborative with other OISM users and contributes to various communication channels, including mailing lists, discussions from, and physical meetings. As internet, social media, open source software, etc. has seen main citizen knowledge based projects for a host of diverse purpose launched on the internet over the last few years. OISM has been a unique case. The academic and industrial community has recognized OISM that slowly, based on the rise of, become an important distributor of geodata but its widest success in growing a global community of people willing to participate in the collection and maintenance of geodata. There are some communities actively involved in much more than collecting geodata to build and maintain this global geodata base. In addition, the communities involved in, for example, human framework, open source software development to support OISM and the GIS community and in building a network of support for these using and contributing to the OISM project. In recent years, several scientific disciplines, for example, geography, GIS science, spatial planning, cartography, computer science, and technology have realized the intense potential of OISM and it has become the subject of academic research. OISM offers to research a unique database that is globally scaled and the body of knowledge created and maintained by a very large collaborative network of volunteers. And almost GIS community and industry surrounding the quality of the geodata in OISM has seen a major effect being made on evaluating the quality of the OISM geodata. OISM is now being used increasingly in a variety of practical or scientific applications in different domains, which demonstrate the usability of the crowdsourced geodata. In OISM, and there are some data quality issues with the OISM database, which can be mitigated against through 
specific approach to using the actual data. A first important category is the development of a set of different spatial routing and navigating systems that operate on a large scale. For example, routing for cars, bikes, open road serve, emergency routing, indoor routing, and agricultural logistics. Further, typical use of OISM includes improving cartography or developing location based learning. Another innovation was the development of 3D city models from OISM. OISM provides a rich set of opportunities. Discover novel and valuable patterns enhanced in the geodata collected by agents to better understand the activities of contributes to open knowledge projects, the characteristics of their human computer interactions, and the potential to tackle classification GIS research question using the model and rewandering approach to the collection and distribution of geographical data. Now, I would like to thank for investing your valuable time for listening my presentation. Thank you very much.